Hi, listeners. Welcome to the She Speaks Life podcast, a weekly encouragement where we share our God stories. I'm your host, Jamie Elizabeth, and I am so glad you are spending time with us today to listen. Hi, friends. Welcome back to She Speaks Life. I'm going to introduce to you my friend, Teresa Reif, who shared her incredible God story in season one, episode seven. And if you haven't heard it yet, that's okay, because we're going to talk more of what God has been doing through her process of healing, but also her book that she wrote how she overcame sexual abuse from the inside out. Hi, Teresa. How are you? Good. Thank you. So glad to be back with you today. So fun. I know. This is fun. I haven't had you on here for a while. You were in the very beginning stages of this podcast. I've had a pretty full schedule since then, too. (laughs) Lots of changes. Lots of changes. Good ones. Lots of changes. So good. Well, I know I'm excited to hear this, and I know those that are listening are anticipating to hear just your backdrop. You want to just share your testimony on how this even began for you. I was sexually abused by my father as a child, and I've really worked through over the years overcoming the effects of that and realized in trying to overcome that I really couldn't find good resources for myself, that I found either the people overshared for me personally, and Mm. that just felt like I was being injured all over again. Right. Or it was more of a clinical book written by a psychologist, and I really couldn't, I guess I'm just not smart enough to really understand (laughs) what they were saying, Um, but it just didn't go deep, which is what I knew I needed. Yeah. I needed that. Yeah, I needed that. So that was really what my book is. It differs from other books in that I don't detail what happened to me, but what I go through is the process that God walked me through and what he did in my life. Yeah. So one of the things that you wanted to talk about was how did you get through even beginning to write this book and just looking at the Heavenly Father in a way that didn't distort what you experienced with your earthly father. That was definitely one of the milestones for me that I made a connection, released uh, my own father and forgave him and really took on the heavenly father, our father in heaven, God, the father as my own personal father and Mm -hmm. let him parent me. Even as an adult, I believe we still need to be parented. Lord knows we don't have all the answers as even though we're we're coined adults by all legal purposes. Mm We we still, I don't know about you, but I still have days where I'm like, I don't want to be in charge. No, No, I don't want to be an adult. But when I really made that decision and really set it as a really a cornerstone of my life to look at and to say, okay, God, you're my father. I need your wisdom. I need your help. I need your understanding. That was a huge shift in my life, just as much for the connection that I made for myself with who God is. And then just the conversation. So the conversation between me and God became much more natural, Mm -hmm. became a relationship Mm -hmm. rather than looking at him as God, my father, I don't really understand you. You created the heavens and I believe it, but I'm just not sure. What does that mean? You know, and and in making that decision, it really was a, a decision in my life. Then it became an emotional, reliable, incredible relationship with a father. So good. Yeah. And so you mentioned it was just having conversations with God, not so much some curriculum, but just you and God having alone time. Yeah, definitely. And scripture verses, Mm -hmm. obviously Mm -hmm. helping you and definitely. Yeah. So that's great because I think we need to have that healing in order for us to move forward. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so your book, this is just amazing. I love it. On your cover, the title is Overcoming Sexual Abuse from the Inside Out and with a person inside a cage. Can you share more about how you got that title and that picture? It's just so cool. I know everybody's got to hear this. Yeah. My oldest daughter, it just 
was amazing. I explained to her a little bit what I was thinking and she just took it to a whole nother level. She did an incredible job. Thanks, Emma. <laughs> yes. Thanks, my Emma. So sweet. The, this is a verse that really changed for me how I looked at my life with Jesus. And this is the verse where I um, got that part of the title from the inside out. It is Romans 12, one to two, and I love the message version. So that's where it's from. It says, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Mm. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Awesome. You know, that message version, it just so speaks it so it real. It hits me right where I am every yeah. single time. Yeah, so good. Someday, Eugene Peterson, he's on my list of people I want to meet in heaven. Yeah. I'm in first. I'm in line first <laughs> when I get up there. That's my first line. I'm going to stand in. Hi, it's so nice to meet you. So amazing. So yeah. good. So, yeah. The cage on the cover really is an incredible picture. Still, for me, really, really powerful. I was on my way to share with some ladies about my book coming out and what I was kind of going for and what my you know reasoning was. And I had a couple of weeks to spend some time thinking about what I was going to say. And I kept asking God, okay, God, what do you want me to say? And he kept saying, don't prepare. <laughs> I'm like, what? Excuse me? Can you come again? And I said it a few times, right? Like we, I'm pressing in. Yeah. Lord, I'm going to ask you again. It's like, another uh, day, Lord Jesus, help me. Oh, what great. am I going yeah. to say? Here comes Can the faith. Here comes faith. trust. Yeah. And again, don't prepare. That's yeah. all I kept hearing. So, I mean, even though it freed up time, I, I still really wanted to prepare. But two weeks later, I'm on my way in the car. 45-minute little drive there. Thank goodness it was 45 minutes and not mm -hmm. three. Finally, I shut off worship music and I said, Lord, this is it. We only have a few minutes. What am I supposed to say? And he put the picture of that cage that's on the front of my book into my head. Wow. And I thought, mm. okay, that's mm. the picture. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. But what he continued with, he showed me what God did in my life is that he didn't expect me to get out of that cage on my own. Mm -hmm. And in fact, he climbed right into that cage with me and mm. sat with me in that cage until I was ready to get on my knees. And he mm. stayed right there with me on his knees. And mm -hmm. until I was ready to stand, he waited on mm -hmm. his knees with me. And then I stood and he stood right with me. And he doesn't expect us to do it on our own. He, yeah. he was there right with me when I was ready to take one step out of the cage and leave one in. We all do that one in one right. place and one in the other. Oh, we're, yeah. But we're making yeah. an effort. He didn't disappear. He didn't leave me. He wasn't disappointed that I wasn't already out of the cage. He wasn't trying to pull me or push me in any direction. He waits. He's yes. patient. We're not okay. patient, but yeah. he's patient. Yes. yes. And he loves us the same. He doesn't change. He doesn't get frustrated with us because we're not moving fast enough. We all know how that is in life. We ex either expect ourselves to move faster. Yeah. We have someone else expecting us to move faster, like I our know. children or our husbands or <gasps> we're so people hard on ourselves. behind us or people in traffic behind us. You name it. <laughs> There's always someone, right, pushing us to the next spot, but he's not like that. And it just was an incredible picture of his grace and really yeah. how he loves us. He mm -hmm. loves us so unfathomably, honestly, but that picture for me was so powerful that mm -hmm. then when we're out of the cage and we're ready to walk, he's laying the ground out in front of us and coming right along with us. And he, mm -hmm. he's making the way clear and safe and full of love. And when we're ready to run, he's not going to let us fall. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So. My experience, he's so gentle. And that's what I keep saying. And, and hearing people's testimonies, you get that a lot. Mm -hmm. That God was so gentle with me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yes, he's such a gen gentleman. He he's is. not going to force us, but just kindly show us the way. Mm -hmm. And I love how you pictured him inside the cage mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not from the outside, you know, saying, come right. on, you can do it That's right. because you're freaked out. You're scared. Right. You're fearful, right. you know, exactly. and mm -hmm. 
for him to give you that visual of being inside there and holding your hand and carrying mm -hmm. you out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's incredible stuff. Yeah. 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 And I think that we have a responsibility there that we have to really change and shift the way that we think mm -hmm. about him because yeah. of our culture, because mm -hmm. we are, you know, like that first said, we do have to be careful to not believe what our culture says, all these expectations that we really essentially put on ourselves or that we allow right. other people to place on us, that we have to remind ourselves over and over again, that he is a loving God, that, mm -hmm. that our, he's the one that we need to please. And he's the one that we need to turn to and believe in and trust. Yes. Just like you said, you know, really there is just a huge amount of grace and love and we have to choose, you know, mm -hmm. to believe that. Well, so good. So what what has the turnout been for you? You just launched your book? It's been exciting. First of all, that people are so proud of me, which is, is just such a unique spot and such a blessing for people to say, wow, I'm just so proud of you. Right. You're so brave. But the miracle, I think that the bi biggest miracle since this, since my book has come out is I had a lot of fear. I was afraid of sharing my story really opens me up then for people to share their stories with me. Yeah. And that at first was kind of a, a scary spot, you right. know, because I love people and yeah. I, but I don't want to carry their right. stuff. Right. right? right. And, and I'm not yeah. meant to, even like we're not meant to carry our family's stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. We do that though. And I had a lot of fear that I would start carrying other people's stuff. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. And, but here's what's the miracle is that, more and more women and men as well have now shared with me their stories and shared with me that they haven't told anyone but their spouse ever mm -hmm. to this point. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just, of course, honored yeah. first that, wow, that they would trust me. And right. so thank you, Jesus, that he's found me trustworthy enough mm -hmm. to send people being mm -hmm. willing to share their story. But the miracle for me personally is that I, I haven't actually walked away heavy. I've walked away realizing like, thank you, Lord, because yeah. every time, you know, you people listening, listen, listen to me. Every time you share your story, there's power in your words. Yes. And thank you, Jamie, for sharing people's stories, because mm -hmm. that's there's just so much power in another person's testimony of what God has done. And that story yeah. of, wow, God did this for me. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid people don't be afraid to share your story because it changes people's lives that me sharing through my book is because mm -hmm. God asked me to do it. Not because I think I'm smarter or better than anybody else, but because God asked me to do it, I just did it. And so now right. I'm in this place where I'm like, okay, God, people are coming to me and they're trusting me with their story. And I'm mm -hmm. just so honored, but I've walked and I'm not, mm -hmm. I don't feel that heaviness. And that's right. really a miracle just and grace God's yes. put on my life that I'm not carrying. Yes. It's just it's so wild. good. It blows my mind. And you probably prepared yourself to knowing, hey, I'm making a choice now not to carry those other people's burdens. Because it's not for me to no. carry. Right. It's for God. Right. Yeah. And I love it when people share what's going on with them because that shame just gets released. As soon mm -hmm. as we start to tell Absolutely. somebody, we mm -hmm. bring it out to the light. I always right. say, you know, reveal is the first step to healing and reveal to heal. And it brings it out to the light and those shame shackles start to fall off. Yeah. So, yeah. You are. That's exactly yeah. one thing that I share after each chapter of my book. My for instance, my first chapter is called freedom and really just the freedom to be able to make your own choices in a lot of ways is one of my main points. And mm -hmm. because we do all, in a sense, we put ourselves in prison sometimes by saying yes too many times right. or letting someone make a choice for you when really you wanted to make the choice yourself. You know, right. there's all those spots where we really just aren't good at boundaries mm -hmm. or we're not ready to answer the person's question right that second, but we feel the pressure to yes. right? all those different spots. So while you're writing the book, was it hard to rehash some of those moments? Was there some kind of surprise healing moments that you maybe had to have gone through or days that it was just hard to write more than others? It was a little more tiring than I thought it would be. I have to admit, like physically, mm -hmm. I kind of would get to some of the end of my days when I had really been on a roll writing and I would just write for six, eight hours at a time. Oh my gosh. Yeah. For that long, I was like, ooh, 
coffee, you need to diet get up coke. and get moving. <laughs> yeah, something. But I really, it was a journey of gratefulness for me. It was a constant reminder of what God did by telling my story in that way. And by, because of course I put the answers in my book, you know, so this was the answer that I found. It wasn't that I was yeah. left hopeless ever because right. God doesn't leave us that way. He's so faithful. He's mm-hmm. just was so faithful. And so over mm-hmm. and over again, I think the common thread throughout my book is that one, we have to participate, yes. but two, mm-hmm. when we do, and when we surrender, mm-hmm. he takes care of it. I yeah. mean, he does not leave us ever we think he does, mm-hmm. you know, or we tell ourselves, well, God doesn't mm-hmm. really care. But that's mm-hmm. not true. We need to make the choice. We need to participate and we need to allow him to work. But once we do that, he'll yeah. do it. He'll yeah. absolutely do it. Yeah. So he's such it a rescuer. Incredible process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So good. Yeah. Well, I love everything that you're doing Thanks. to help women yeah. break free from this and find freedom. It's really my hope. There's yeah. more people out there that have been sexually abused than we know. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. for some people, they don't want to share because they feel so much shame. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it just takes one person to be vulnerable to tear down those walls. And Mm -hmm. God asked you to be the person to be vulnerable and write your story and get it out there in a book. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do when we write our story is to share what God did through us Mm -hmm. and it needs to be told. Yeah. 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 Hey, can we pray for the people listening? Let's do it. And just pray. Yeah. God, thank you for how good you are. Thank you that you love us, that no matter what scars or hurts or things that we've done or things that we've done to ourselves, I thank you that you love us so much that you forgive us. That mm-hmm. You just take it. You want us to just leave it with you. And so I thank you that the people listening, that you're going to give them the ability to choose you mm-hmm. and to surrender everything in their lives, God, that they need to just let go of. I pray that you give them an extra measure of an ability to let go and yes. let you take over. So God, would you come? Would you come into their homes and into their cars and and just mm-hmm. be with them? I thank you that that you just want to hang out with us, that it isn't pressure, yeah. but that you just want to be in relationship with us. Mm-hmm. Just like Jamie and I hanging out, mm-hmm. having coffee, God, and talking about how great you are. You want to you wanna talk to each of us that way. So I That's pray that right. you pour out your, your presence and be with the people listening. I thank you for bringing healing and freedom into their lives in Jesus' name name. Amen. Amen. All right. So tell the people listening here where they can get your book. If you go on to amazon.com, you can buy either a paperback version or a Kindle version. And it's Teresa Reif. My last name is R-E-I-F-F as in Frank. And the book is called Overcoming Sexual Abuse from the Inside Out. Yes. And you guys are going to Love the cover. It's so darling. And to have your whole family in on this. Mm -hmm. It was so sweet. You had your daughter uh, doing the art Mm -hmm. and your husband doing his supporting thing. He was my editor, my (laughs) business manager. He still is my business manager. It was a little hard to have him edit it first, but we, yeah, I had to change my attitude. I know. I was like, okay, I get that. He's smart. Yeah. It's good. He's just, he might be my spouse, but he's still smart. He's great. He did all my editing. He is, man, he has done so much. It's amazing. And mm-hmm. and then my second daughter did a bunch of, she's my social media guru. So yeah. if you see me and I look good on Facebook or Instagram, <laughs> that's why. Because she's so, she loves me so much. She wants me to look good. And then my youngest suffered through many not cooked meals. So yeah. I'm sorry, Allie. It just... <laughs> Sorry, it didn't get done. <laughs> she's she's hoping now that I'm done with my book that I'll yeah. have time. But honestly, I've just been busier. So I'm like, yeah, oh, honey. So. I love that each family member had their own gifts mm-hmm. to contribute mm-hmm. into this Definitely. book. Mm-hmm. That was probably pretty special. Yes. And what was great was you had a prayer team involved yes. in yep. your book. I couldn't have done it. And not just that. launching, guys. It was during the whole writing process. Mm-hmm. She built this private Facebook group and asked a lot of us ladies to pray mm-hmm. each week mm-hmm. while she told us each time what she was doing, what chapter she was in, what theme she was in. Yeah. And just sharing that to encourage you guys if 
you write a book or whatever you're doing. You don't have to be writing a book, but whatever you're doing, chances are you're doing it for the kingdom. Chances mm-hmm. are the enemy's coming at you and you need to cover yourself with yes, prayer absolutely. and cover absolutely. whatever you're doing in prayer. Yeah. Because pretty much everything else in our lives went pretty berserk. Yeah. 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 But yeah. the writing the book was fantastic. When I was book doing was that, fantastic. I was like, woo woo. Yeah. Yeah. But man, outside yeah. of that, life kind of went really bizarre. Yeah. The enemy doesn't like when we share our stories. No. He'd rather keep us isolated and quiet. And mm-hmm. ladies, everyone has a story to tell. And isn't it amazing when someone speaks up? Like I said, now that I've spoken up, people come and tell me their stories. Yeah. So people need someone to be first in line. Do you ever go to a buffet mm-hmm. and nobody wants to start? The right. Line, yeah. Right. But the yeah. minute one person gets their plate, uh-huh. which by the way is usually me. I love yeah. food. And so I'm first in line. I don't, I'm not embarrassed. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go eat y'all. I'm hungry, but yep. get in line, be the first. It's okay. It's worth it to be brave. And I always tell my girls, I always have, you can do anything. God tells us 365 yep. times actually in the mm-hmm. Bible. Mm-hmm. He tells us once for every day, do not be afraid. That's right. That's right. So be bold, strong, That's how important and very it is. courageous because you can do it. It's worth it. I heard Havila Cunnington. She said, success is showing up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nothing more, nothing less. She's just like, success is just showing right. up. Yeah. So if you could just show up and do that thing that God told you to do, you say yes, you follow through and you show up. She says, you're successful. My mentor um, from Expression Church, her name is Pastor Debbie. Mm-hmm. She always says that when we obey God, we're already in it. That's success. right. And that's what she told me when I was starting my book. She said, no, you're yep. good. You don't have to worry about whether the book sells, whether it yep. makes a difference or not, because you are obeying God. You're already a success. So, yes. Yeah, Love that. It. It, takes the, it takes the burden off of us. It takes the pressure off of us. Yes. And when my husband yeah. puts pressure on for the yeah. book sales, I can just say, I don't know. Ask God. I yeah. don't know. It's his idea. It's not mine. Just take that up to God. Sorry, honey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do care. <laughs> but, you know, it's just kind of like stress. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, so good. thanks for coming on here, Teresa. Yes. You're such a good Thank friend. You, my friend. And we'll talk to you guys next time. Stay tuned for the next She Speaks Life podcast. Thank you so much for listening today. I trust that God has encouraged you through this message. For more information on this ministry and to access free downloads, please visit my website at jamieelizabeth.com and sign up. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at jamieelizabeth.com. She Speaks Life. That's J-A-Y-M-E, Elizabeth, She Speaks Life. Until next time, my friends, I pray God reveals himself through your own life story.